Good morning guys, so I just finished day 10 of my daily drawing challenge for this month. One thing that I have found so far that helps for me at least is getting this done as early as possible in my day, which ties in really well with a new habit I'm trying to form, or rather a habit that I'm trying to get rid of or replace, which is actually working really well for me because I am currently working on changing my morning routine and changing my relationship with social media. So replacing the habit that I have of grabbing my phone as soon as I wake up, grabbing my laptop, uh, and replacing that with a new habit of having a quick drawing session and then 10 to 30 minutes of exercise, having a shower and then getting on with my day from there. Spending my morning screen free has opened up so much creative time for me so it often starts in bed with my sketchbook and then if I get really deep into it as I did with this one I'll move over to my desk where I have things, my pens, my paints and just take it from there. Uh, another thing, we're getting a bit off topic now, but another thing that is helping me break the habit of just mindless scrolling on social media throughout the day is that whenever I catch myself on my phone for no real reason, I will switch straight away to my Duolingo app where I am practicing on just refreshing my Spanish at the moment. Um, and I think I currently have a 32 day streak going on there. But back to the daily drawing challenge, I have so far um, just missed one day. I spent a couple of days out of town this week uh, because we got the sad news at the end of January that a family member had passed away. So um, we headed up to Manchester for the funeral this week and I did manage to squeeze in some drawing time on the first night we were there uh, while we were in the travel lodge um, and my mum was watching the news. But understandably the next day I really didn't have drawing high on my priorities. So I'm gonna give myself a pass on that one. I don't think that missed day, missing that day in particular was anything to get too hung up on. And I'm back home now and I'm back drawing. So drawing when I'm away from home is something that I do really struggle with and I'm gonna have to work on this month. Um, even just this weekend, I'm gonna be staying at Aussie. So it's gonna be a good time to test that out. But one thing that I also am getting the hang of with this challenge so far is coming up with things to draw. So usually I will look back on my previous day and see if anything stands out that I can draw inspiration from for a drawing. So for example, if I watched a film the day before or just telly or Netflix, could I draw one of the characters? Could I draw one of the sets? Last week, Ozzy and I were talking about where we might want to go on holiday this year. And so for the next few days, I was drawing and painting different locations that we had talked about. Anything that I can pick up on really uh, from my day or from my week, I will see if there's anything from that pool of memories that I can draw inspiration from. From to, for a quick drawing. Now yesterday, looking back on the week that I've had, I really couldn't think of anything that I wanted to draw. The last few days were obviously quite difficult ones, um, so there's nothing that I particularly wanted to draw from that. So what I did was my next backup thing, which is to draw from photos. So I have a huge Pinterest board full of things that I could draw, but I, what I did yesterday was I went and grabbed a anatomy book that I have over here somewhere, and I just drew some hands, some studies from that. And as I was drawing, as usually happens when you start to spark that creativity, I actually did remember something from that week that I could draw, and that was that I met my great uncle Philip for the first time while I was in Manchester. So that was a cool thing that I thought I might record as a memory. Um, so I just pocketed that idea while I finished off the anatomy studies that I was doing and I've used that idea today for my drawing practice so I didn't even have to think about it. And as I was setting up my camera to start recording this bit, I actually did smudge it a little bit, which is kind of annoying, but I'm glad that I have got my drawing practice out of the way for today because it's gonna be a relatively busy day. I have my first ever live stream today on Patreon. I'm nervous because it's, you know, completely unknown, but I'm really excited to get started with it. And I'm excited to get this first one out of the way so that I know what I need to do for next time. If anything goes wrong, I'll know how to improve on it for next time, but it's super exciting. But I need to get a lot of stuff done before that, so I've got a video that, well, I've got a painting that I want to do that I might potentially film. And then if I have time, I might film another video. Then I also need to get all my stuff together for the weekend that I'm spending at Aussies. Make sure I'm packed and ready to go and have everything sorted before the stream starts tonight. So I'm going to stop talking about it and get on with it.
Right, so it's starting to get dark and I'm getting a bit anxious about streaming later, so I thought I would relax myself by making sure I have everything sorted out. So I'm right now packing my bag for the weekend and I thought I would show you the stuff that I'm gonna take with me to be able to be drawing on the go. So of course I have my sketchbook. Uh, this is where I'm doing all my drawings at the moment. I am just gonna keep it really simple with my drawing tools and take a pencil, just a cheap Bic mechanical pencil. I have a Bic Biro here. I'm also bringing a white pencil to do any highlights on that lovely toned paper. And just in case, I'm gonna also bring my portable paint palette that you've just seen, the watercolor palette that I can use on the go. And it's all going in this nifty little pencil case. So that's it, and that can just go really comfortably in the front pocket of my rucksack. And once I've put some clothes in here, I'll be all set to go for the weekend. Now I'm gonna test my streaming setup and leave it set for later on tonight, and then I can crack on with the rest of my few hours of daylight that I've got left without having to worry about anything else. God, guys, what a week it has been. So last time we spoke, I was heading off to Aussie's. Um, we were just gonna have a really chill couple of days. He's been working like double shifts back to back for about two weeks now. So he was knackered. So we were just gonna veg out for a couple of days. Um, obviously <laughs> doing nothing is something I'm very good at. So I was happy to do that. Um, I did manage to get some drawing in, um, just uh, chilling with Thule in bed. And that was great. That was a good practice for gesture kind of drawings, um, just cause obviously she's a cat, she doesn't stop moving. And then the next day started like any other. Uh, we had a lovely breakfast in bed. Ozzy made the best omelet I've ever had. And we were just gonna chill. And then um, we got a phone call from his mum, who is a taxi driver, a black cab driver. Um, and obviously working in London, she does get to meet a lot of really interesting people. And on that particular day, she had happened to meet one of Kendrick Lamar's crew. Um, his music publisher was in the back of her cab and they got talking and he so kindly gifted us with tickets to go and see Kendrick that night at the O2 Arena. I honestly didn't believe it. I thought this is a really cruel scam by some horrible guy that's just pretending that he knows Kendrick Lamar um, and he's gonna make us go all the way to the arena and we're gonna get there and you know we'll find out that there were no tickets. You know, got dressed that evening, headed out. We went for dinner at Yala Yala. Lovely Lebanese food, the best shawarma, oh my God, and mojitos. So that alone, I was happy with. Like if the, if the evening ended there, I would have been fine. Little did I know just how good it was gonna get. So we went to the box office, got our tickets, and they came with these little VIP tokens. And we're trying to like keep our cool, you know, at like this is completely normal, we're used to this. Um, and yeah, we ended up getting, cutting the queue, which was great. And in the arena itself, we were down in like the main crowd in front of the stage, but in our own section, this like platform area, suspended out of the crowd um, with, you know, maybe like five other people in there. It was the best vantage point. There was one point where he like popped up out of the middle of the crowd and he was right there and I was freaking out. The whole thing, I kept turning around and being like, is this real? Like, am I dreaming? This cannot be real. Like, Monday night. My plan for Monday night was to watch a f TV show about expensive plane tickets or something and ended up having the most amazing concert experience that I've ever had in my life. So, I mean, shout out to Ozzy's mum, thank you for that. Shout out to Kendrick, the show was incredible. Keep them lights up, y'all. So, 
I'll be honest, with the daily drawing thing, after that, I was still in like this whirlwind. So I didn't draw for on that day and the next day. So that's two days that I missed. And what, I don't know, what I've been learning along the way from this daily drawing challenge that I've set myself, because um, I'm constantly bending the rules for myself because for me, a challenge is about learning something along the way. Um, like with Inktober, I was learning how to manage filming and uploading every day, um, the consistency of that. With this, I'm learning how to fit drawing into my day where I normally wouldn't have. So I don't normally draw when I'm not at home. So drawing while I was at Aussies, even though it was like another comfortable space, that was new for me. What I've learned from this last few days is that the priority for me is to make memories and then you know secondary to that is making art so i'm happy like i'm i'm not mad at myself for missing days maybe people think that that would be a failure in like a daily drawing challenge but for me i've already drawn in situations where i normally wouldn't have i'm straight back into drawing now uh, which is another thing that i've learned where it can be so easy to miss a day and then be like, oh, well, okay, that, that's a failure. I'm gonna pick up again next month. I'm gonna try again next month. Just, it's great to have pressure on yourself to do it, but at the same time, just knowing that you can pick up again, wherever you left off, you know, not to let a hiccup be the end is great. So I think there's, there are four things that I've learned so far from this. Um, having things to draw, um, like drawing from experiences, drawing as early in my day as possible, or having a time in my day that's dedicated to drawing and getting it out of the way, picking up wherever I left off, not letting a missed day be a major hiccup, and living life first and drawing later. So another thing that I've adjusted for myself is that the last couple of days, the way I've been creative has been different to my usual sketching or painting. I have been, if you remember in my last vlog, I bought some paint samples while I was buying different colors for the bookshelves and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them, but I had some big A1 mount boards and I just yesterday decided that I wanted to paint them. I thought they'd make maybe good backdrops for Instagram photos, flat lays, stuff like that. Um, possibly as like tabletops for my videos, but I. I'm not sure how well that'd work out. So yeah. Okay, so I just got the weirdest text. I don't know who that's from. What was I saying? <laughs> Painting these mount boards. I was primarily doing it to use as something, but just the process of doing it was very enjoyable. Even though obviously it, it doesn't seem like anything, it was nice to, the reason I wanna work on bigger pieces this year is I love the engagement that it has with your body. I love the movement and flow of just bigger paint strokes and just that physical feeling of painting rather than, you know, the just the hand movements of working in a sketchbook. So that was a really enjoyable, like, five, ten minutes. They look gorgeous. They actually look so nice. I kind of, I feel like it'd be very pretentious to, like, hang them up, but they do kind of look like a contemporary art piece altogether, kind of giving me Rothko vibes. Anyway, I'm gonna put them away. I'm not gonna hang them up, but they are lovely, lovely colours. And then also, in terms of what I've been doing in my sketchbook, the last couple of days have been more journaly. So I stuck in the little knickknacks from the Kendrick concert, and then the next day, today, this morning, <laughs> my sketchbook page was um, just like a journal page where I wrote about it a little bit, just so that I could have that memory there. So two quick and less artistic pages, but for me that still counts. Um, I've said before, I might link I might link the video in the cards, but with art challenges, I think the best thing to do is do it in a way that's gonna work for you. Do it in a way that's gonna benefit you and where you're gonna come out of it having learned something and not just having drawn every day. So I'm I'm learning a lot from this. With the page that I did today, I actually used this pen, this amazing glass pen that I received as a gift. Um, in my P.O. box 
it was sent from before Christmas, I think, but I've only just received it. And it's from Anastasia um, from Russia. And it was the most gorgeously packaged package I've ever received. It's really like made me wanna up my game with my packaging. She sent a really sweet letter and some of her own artwork. I'll leave a link below to her Instagram if you wanna check it out. I love how in the letter she's like, it's just a little present for you, nothing special. Yes, it's amazing, like thank you so much. Um, really, really special, um, so I really appreciate it. Thank you for that, Anastasia. But yeah, for the rest of the day, um, it's gonna be a busy work one, but quite a boring filming one. I'm doing a lot of like editing and emails and boring admin stuff, but I'm feeling good, sun's out, and I look like a bean, but life's good. Also, forgot to mention, I am trying out Redbubble at the moment um, as an alternative to Society6. So I thought I would order a couple of things from their website just to check out the quality before I make that move. And they got delivered today, so quite quick delivery. Basically, I saw that Helen Anderson, who is a vlogger, she has this amazing Bob Ross t-shirt that I love and I wish I knew where it was from. I wish I could find it. Um, but in the meantime, I decided to get um, a Bob Ross sticker very cool i do like the quality of that and um i got a t-shirt as well that's like a pixel bob ross but i don't know if you can see in this lighting um the color of his hair and the color of the t-shirt um it looked good on the photo in the website but it's not exactly the same like his hair just kind of blends in and i feel like i don't know i feel like it looks you can't tell as much that it's him but I like it. I like the quality. Um, I do think I will make that move over to Redbubble. Oh, and I will leave links below to the artist that made these as well. Hey guys, so I can't remember the last time we spoke. Um, I haven't been filming a lot this month and it's been quite nice to be honest to just be living life and not worrying about the camera. But I thought I would come and sign off. It's actually the 1st of March today. I'm at the moment just cutting down some paper to use as postage labels. Um, I just find it really affordable to just get an A40 of sticky back paper and cut it down to A6 size and use that as my postage labels. It's also just a nice kind of non effort related work task to be doing like no thought required but i'm getting something done so that is the start of my plan for work today my main priority today is actually to do a finished painting so in this month of drawing every day i spent a lot of time in my sketchbook and doing small pieces lots of studies and it was lots of fun it's been great to commit that much time to drawing but i've realized that in this process. I really miss the act of making finished pieces and building up a nice solid body of work. So that is my goal for this month. I'm gonna try to do seven new pieces of work, finished pieces of work a week. So it may be one a day, it may be a few in a day. I have a few different themes going, um, but I'll talk about that in the next vlog once I've started with it. But obviously today, 1st of March, is the first day. I'm gonna see if I can get a painting in and that'll be the Patreon reward for this month as well. Every month I do a exclusive print for the patrons. So I'm hoping to do a painting today that I'll make into prints for them. So regarding the daily drawing thing, it went pretty well. There were days where I didn't necessarily draw, like you saw the day I did the big, um, just painting the boards. I also got into doing digital art for the first time really um, doing it properly. I used my iPad and tablet here and there to like map out ideas really basically, but because I don't have a lot of experience with digital art, I never have been able to really 
get my ideas out there the way that I would want them to look. So Bailey in one of her, Bailey J in one of her um, recent videos recommended a, scar a, scar a class on Skillshare that she found um, that was like Procreate Basics. I bought my iPad specifically so that I could get the app Procreate because I'd heard so many people talking about it. And once I tried it, I it was such a steep learning curve, especially because I don't know, <laughs> I've got such a twitchy eye. I don't know anything about digital art um, or using a tablet. So I just ended up not using my iPad really, um, not for drawing anyway. So Bailey recommended that class on Skillshare. This isn't sponsored by the way, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I took that class and it's helped so much for me to just be able to get my ideas down in digital form. So I've done a lot of, a few like fun little drawings there and those that really helped out with my daily drawing thing just so that I would have lots of different ways to do it. Like if it was late at night and I was in bed and I didn't want to get my sketchbook out, I knew I could just whip my iPad out and do a little sketch on there. So it made it so much easier to have different things that I could do when it came to drawing every day. And I guess that that will be my final tip. Um, just have as many options as possible for the days where you're not in the mood to draw. Just be as open with it as you can and fulfill that brief in the best way that you can find in that time. So if it's doing a sketch on you know, the back of a napkin or doing a full on massive painting or doing some digital doodles, you know, even if it's just with your mouse and MS Paint, you know, like if you can do something, just like the act of committing to it, I think is better than nothing. Um, but yeah, did I manage to draw every day? I don't think every single day, but more days than I've ever drawn uh, in a row ever. Um, definitely more days out of a month that I've ever spent drawing. So for me, this was a success. Um, I thought I would show you a couple of things, maybe uh, the most recent thing that I did. This was from yesterday, I think, maybe the day before, but it is just this painting um, to go along with this one that you will have seen already in a video. But yeah, I did another one. I've got three more canvases this size, so I'm gonna keep doing a few more little landscapes like this. They're a lot of fun. This one I did live on Patreon and it was it was a good load of fun. We're actually gonna do it um, all together next time, like a paint along, so that'll be interesting. Um, let's see if there's anything in here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see any of this, but I've done like pages of like life drawing studies as well. And then the only other thing really to talk about is a couple more things that I received um, in the last few days through the post. So first off is this one. This is a letter that came in a really cute, really lovely decorated envelope. Um, and this is from Lily in Illinois. And she just sent this really, really cute little bundle of things. The sweetest letter and what I love in this is that she also keeps um, like a visual diary that I've been trying to do as well um, and she calls them happy books and I love that so I might start calling mine that from now on. And this little note that says thank you for waking up in the morning and creating, you got this. So thank you for that Lily, that is so kind of you. And then the last one, this is from Faye from Ireland and I have to admit Faye, I did read this whole entire letter in my head in an Irish accent and I wouldn't do it out loud but I'm so bad at accents. I can do it really well in my head and then once it comes out of my mouth it sounds ridiculous but thank you so much for this letter Faye. It was really, really you have amazing handwriting. <laughs> it was really lovely to hear from you and yeah I'm always just so jealous of people's stationery. Everyone has the nicest like fanciest paper and if any of you guys leave your like Instagram names or anything on here, I'll leave them all below in the description so people can check out your work if you're artists or, you know, just come and say hi. But yeah, overall, thank you guys for joining me again this month. Thank you for watching. I hope that my tips for drawing every day have been at least remotely useful. I thought, you know, I could make a different kind of format of video for this, but I thought it'd be good to just try it and take you through it as it actually happens and, you know, realistically, what it is like to try and draw every day. Um, I'm not, I know that other people will probably be able to do it better than me, but for me, I don't know, I always think of these challenges as something for myself and if I can share, you know, at least one tip that's useful for other people, then that's all I would really want. For me, it's been a success and I'm looking forward to spending next month making some solid pieces of art, really building up my collection and having new stuff in the shop and just building up a good portfolio of work. I'm also next month going to be sharing like how I make prints because I do keep getting asked about that. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.